All right, so for this next section, let's go ahead and grab our weapon and we're going to be making it um, understand who is the owning character that's controlling this weapon. So it'll actually fire when we're playing in the game editor and also let's deviate from the weapons for just a minute and let's jump into getting two screens. Since we've been setting this up for a client server and we can see what both characters are doing. Um, when I go to play this, I mean, it's not extremely helpful where, like, I have one giant screen and, like, I can't preview the other two. I can't preview, like, both the characters in the windows to see what they're doing. Uh, so, way to fix that is we can jump down to the drop-down arrow next to play. Uh, we have two players. We can go to advanced settings. And what I want to do is in the play, in our play in new window, we want to change our common window size to, we can do something in here or we can do custom. I'm going to do a custom. I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know, let's say 760 by uh, 512. And let's not make it in the center of the screen. So that way, hopefully, these two windows will break up and uh, we'll be able to see them side by side. So now, if I go down to play, we're in new editor window. So we should have two new windows pop up. Push play. And now both our windows are side by side. So it makes it a little bit easier to see like what's going on and debugging our player, our characters. All right, so now that we have that set up, let's jump back over to the weapon and I'm going to close down this tab. And what I want to do really quick before I actually get started shooting, getting everything, all the logic set up for the camera aim for shooting line traces, I want to start making sure that our player character can actually talk to our weapon in the game world. Um, so one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the function tab that has a start fire. I'm going to put a print string in this start fire. So if I type in print, we'll get a print string and these are awesome for using for debug. So I'm going to use the debug name of uh, should be firing weapon. And I'm going to make the color of this print string instead of blue. I'm going to make this something like a uh, red. So that way we actually know that it's being fired within this function graph from the weapons blueprint. So let's jump over to the character blueprint. I know this is a lot of jumping around between blueprints, but I mean, when you're troubleshooting and debugging and setting up weapons to talk to other blue, setting up blueprints to talk to other blueprints, this is a process you got to go through. Uh, so let's jump back over to the third person character blueprint. And what I want to do in the event graph is we have all this logic set up. So when we attack, uh, start fire function will be called from the weapon blueprint if this is actually valid. Problem is, this is never going to pass as valid. So if I were to play this right now, it just won't work. The reason being is because this is nowhere in the world. It doesn't exist right now. This weapon ma the weapon master blueprint we set up doesn't exist in the world. Um, but we don't want to be using the master blueprint. We actually want to be using an actor based on this blueprint. So the way we can make that actor that we want to use to replace this weapon here is we can go up to our weapon master blueprint. We can right click and we can create a child blueprint class. Now, uh, let's call this uh, primary weapon. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, BP. And basically what this does is when we open it up, we're presented with an empty view space. We have our weapon mesh that we um, added in the components earlier. And um, if you notice in the event graph, there's nothing here because this is a child blueprint. Um, so what, what it's doing is it's inheriting all the functionality that we're actually writing within this blueprint. So instead of having to make a blueprint for a hundred thousand weapons, like if you're working on something crazy for like an arsenal, you'd have to make one good master blueprint that's flexible, and you can just then you can just make a whole bunch of actors based on that. And even even if we wanted to say, no, this project uh, this weapon actually needs to fire something like that that has homing bullets or something, then you can actually write that logic within this and make the actor a little bit more unique compared to the to the parent blueprint, but it's still going to inherit all the logic of the parent, which is very useful and it saves tons of time instead of having to rewrite everything from scratch and copy and pasting a lot of stuff. So one thing we will do though, is this is our primary weapon blueprint. We need to have a skeleton mesh for this because if we spawn this weapon blueprint, it's not, nothing's ever gonna really be there. Um, we can do that in just a second. Um, it'll be easy enough. 
Uh, well, since we're here, let's do it now. I'm backtracking. I apologize. So, cool. The first weapon that actually I wanted to use was this prototype assault rifle. So let's just add our static mesh in there. Um, let's go back to the uh, viewport here. And you'll notice that there is our static mesh. So our actor right now, if we compile and save this, in our content browser, we have our primary weapon. This is going to be replacing this. So if I drag this actor out, you will see that our actor actually inherits the skeleton mesh we assigned it. If we delve back into the primary weapon, I'm going to see if I can get this into uh, two screen spaces here. I'll going to make this windows here. And let's, I don't know, I'd say we didn't want to use the assault rifle anymore. We wanted to use something else. So let's go with, I don't know, let's say a uh, rocket launcher maybe. So we replaced the rocket launcher. You see in the viewport immediately that it updated. So that's the nice thing about using these actors is they will update pretty quickly in the viewport. But I'm going to be using the assault rifle right now since it'll actually look a little bit more normal in the character than, you know, using a rocket launcher since our animation doesn't fit that. Uh, since now we have the mesh assigned to our child actor, we can close this down. And let's go into our third person blueprint again. And let's get this blueprint to actually spawn within the world. Now, in the construction script, we actually wrote logic earlier that actually just calls a standard static a skeletal mesh to appear in the world and attach to the character mesh's hand socket. Um, so we will save this just for later. I mean, if I ever write anything, something, I always keep it around just in case. But I'm gonna break up. I'm gonna drag this off. I'm gonna grab a sequence because I'm gonna be writing other functions later that will actually need to be constructed when this player spawns in the world. And after this sequence here, I need to start writing a new function that's actually going to assign our default weapons to our character. So if the player does a loadout and for a mission and they select, let's say, they're wanting to use a shotgun as their primary, and then they have a shock, uh, sniper rifle as their secondary, that when they spawn in the world, those two weapons will be on there. It will be on them, but the primary will be attached to their main hand, and let's say a secondary will be on their back or something like that. So let's create a new function, and I'm going to call this one give default weapons. And from this default weapons here, I need to first find out, okay, who has, who's the server, who's the uh, client, so we can type uh, has, Hans, and we do switch has authority, and from here we need something to happen every time we have any number of weapons on us, so we'll need a for each loop to do this. So a for each loop, what this will do is it'll find everything that exists within a array. An array is just like, say you have a backpack and it's got, you know, seven different items in there. Well, that array technically has seven items in it. That's basically a way to look at an array. It's just a storage space of variables. Um, and what this for each will do is it will run through each one of those within that array and it will do something every to every single one. And then when it hits the last element within that array, it'll after it's already done all the logic for that last element, it will do a completed and then you can continue from there. This completed will only play once, but this loop body will only play as many times as there is items that's in the array. So we will need to make a new array. And I did this earlier, but I need to change this. So you go to variables and you'll make a new uh, variable called default weapons is what I was going to call it. And I was going to click on this little grid up here to make this an array so it's now holding objects um, so for what we need is we need to find we need to turn this into a class and what we need is I don't know why we have it's still an actor let's go to class oh excuse me so we have our weapon Master Blueprint. I forgot, this is a new thing they did recently in mostly Unreal Engine. If you hover over this, we can actually make it a reference or a class. We want it to be a class. Before, it's like you actually had different um, options show up below, but now it's over to the side, which is a little bit more convenient, but excuse me on that. It took me, to remember, it took me a moment to remember that. So now we pretty much, let's say, we made our backpack or our array. We'll assign that array to the 40 hoop. Now we need objects within this array that we need to do something with. So we can add an object, uh, added a value, 
and it's looking for something in here. So let's add our primary weapon. Well, there's our primary weapon right there. So we'll, let's compile it real quick because it's not assigning. Save it. So there, it's got an issue. Sequence has no valid output because there's nothing in here. So let's go to our primary weapon. There we go. Now it's assigned. Let's compile that again. Uh, oh, apologies. So I forgot. Let's grab our default weapons uh, function here. And let's plug that in just to get rid of that little uh, warning there. Okay. So now I'll give our default weapons is now assigned. Uh, so now we need a place to spawn this in the world. I believe it just popped up in the world. Let's get rid of this actor here. You notice our skeletal mesh is now gone, which is good, but our actor has nowhere in the world to be just yet. So let's, let me drag this back to normal view again. And let's go back to our function and let's continue the rest of our logic real quickly here. So what we need to do is a lot of what we did like before with assigning it to the hand. Uh, so how we'll handle that is we will grab our logic we had made earlier. This is just for now. There's different ways to do this too. And actually, let's continue. Let's keep going with this because I was thinking this was going to work and I remember earlier it won't. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to find out the mesh component that we are using. Why is it not showing up here? Let me drag it off from the, from the components at the top. And we need to get our world transform From this world transform, we need to spawn an actor from a class. Well, the good thing is we already have our loop body set up and we have a class that we're going to choose from. So when this runs through, it's going to spawn our primary weapon. That, that we only have we only have one weapon right now, that's the one thing it's going to spawn. So we always want this to spawn no matter what. So always spawn and ignore the collisions, because if it was colliding against something, it might not spawn in the world. Now, we need the instigator and we need an owner. So whoever spawned this actor, which would be the third person character, is going to own that actor. So if this player's spawn in the world with this weapon, that weapon is going to be assigned to that character. So whatever whatever gets shot or whatever that weapon does will be owned to this player. It will be traced back to this player character. So let's do a self. Let's plug it back into the owner and instigator for now. And... Now we need to set this up so it has two things it does. It sets the owning pawn and also attaches to the owner holster. So I'm going to look at the time right now. We're about 12 minutes in. Um, so, so far, I'll stop the video there. Uh, we'll come back and then we'll get these other two functions written out because these functions belong within the uh, weapon blueprint. And once we have those functions written out, hopefully we can come back into the web to the character player and we can assign those two functions and our web and then our weapon actor should now be working with our player character. So see you in the next video.